Hello class, let's start with chapter seven, Islamic architecture. So we start with the chronology. We've uh, we've met we just transitioned from the from the Roman architecture and the Islamic world, the Arab world is really, really gaining a lot of power, eventually uh, expanding towards Spain and eventually even conquering what was Constantinople, which is where we sort of ended our last um, study, which was in the Byzantine Empire. Something that I do want you to know, something I want you to think about is that as we read this book, it's sort of chronological. In a way, you flip the pages and something new happens, you know, history starts to unfold. And the same, uh, uh, what's happening is the same way that you are transitioning from your book to new architecture, new things are happening, but uh, there's also a lot of references. There's a lot of things that you can remember from previous design. So that's something that's very, very important to remember because architecture sort of starts building upon each other. It's very linear. There's all these remarks. There's all, all these there's all these language that is sort of connects to the back. Even to nowadays, one of the greatest architects, if you do go into architecture, one of the greatest uh, architects, they all bring reference to, to history, to historical architecture. That's why it's very, very important. So I want you guys to we keep going. Don't forget what we've been learning. Don't for, don't just throw it away and, okay, I, I, I remembered it for the exam or the quiz, but but use it, use that knowledge to see how, how is it, how uh, how does that connect to what we're seeing right now? How does it connect to, to the new uh, architecture that's unfolding? Because like I mentioned, they are uh, doing that. The, the people living there at those times, they are looking at what's already there. They are looking at the buildings that are next to each other. They are building upon that and in a way either trying to compete and make it better or trying to emulate it or trying to use some of the references and build their own. Those are the sort of things that happen. So this is a, a sort of a timeline. It starts with Muhammad. Muhammad is, is a prophet that really changes everything. It really pushes the Islamic world into, um, into uh, this new era. And so let's talk a little bit about the faith. We just uh, focus a lot on the Christianity and the Christian faith, which is based upon the Trinity, which is this triad. And we, we saw it last time, how the idea of the square, the circle, but this new idea of this triangle coming out in the pendentives was alluding to the Trinity. So the Trinity saying that there's three gods, you know, there's a, or basically that there's one God into, in, in, uh, all composed uh, of three, so uh, God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus, so all uh, as one, but serving as a trinity, and, uh, but having as a central f uh, figure as Jesus, and we see Jesus in the plans, as, uh, as we talked about, Jesus was crucified, was crucified, but uh, and so the plan of the church becomes this landing cross, this this sort of uh, symbol of the church that is representing, uh, connecting them to uh, the story of Jesus. And uh, we see a lot of depictions and mosaics and and all over the place. Uh, referencing stories that we get from the Bible that we see from the Bible. And so that's sort of the Christian faith. Now we go to the Islamic faith. The Islamic faith uh, changes in the sense that it's oneness. They believe in one God. So it's monotheistic in the sense that it's only Allah. So they, uh, they start uh, believing in, in Allah as their one God. And Muhammad becomes the prophet, the last uh, prophet. Uh, that God speaks to, and when he speaks to him, it gives him this holy text, uh, which was the Quran and the Quran. So then this idea of words and this idea of, of uh, the Quran becomes a sacred book, and, and the idea of words becomes very, very important, and we'll see it later on. Something that is interesting to just uh, understand is that they both come from Abraham of religion. So Abraham it becomes a central figure that sort of connects uh, these two religions, and that sort of will come up later on. Another thing that we, we want to reference is Christian faith and Islamic faith. 
Another ways that they differ is that in Christian faith, again, we see all these different Bible stories depicted in mosaics, the story of, of Jesus, the story of disciples, saints. Uh, there's even, uh, we saw the image of the baptistry. So above on the dome, when, when they're being baptized, you see the a dove and, and you see uh, all the, sometimes the Lamb of God representing Jesus. So there's all these different images representing uh, trying to connect them and, and uh, to the story of Jesus and the stories of the Bible. But in the Islamic faith, they're, uh, they're what is called an iconic, which is basically the opposite of iconic, which means no images, having no sort of imagery uh, allowed. So what they, they instead of having no imagery, they become very symbolic and suggestive through geometric patterns. And we'll talk about that later on. And so, uh, so the Muslim, just before we even start, we need to understand that they have five basic truths. The basic truths um, inspire architecture. And we've said this since day one in class, that architecture is being influenced by art, by faith, by religion, by uh, all of these things. The architecture is not just arbitrary creation but it's a reflection of what's really happening in the culture which is why we need to understand uh, a little bit more of the muslim uh, religion uh, uh, the five truths are number one as you mentioned the oneness of god and then muhammad was uh, the messenger of god you know this is a holy prophet this last prophet and that gives them the quran and 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 not only that, but they center their religion on uh, on being able to pray five times a day. So this idea of prayer becomes not only central, but becomes uh, very 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 important into what they're doing. Uh, they have two things uh, that are very important for them. They have this this time of fasting during the Ramadan. They're, they're really this connection to help the poor. And the last one is that they have to make this trip, this pilgrimage, uh, which also we saw in the Christian uh, religion. And pilgrimage was also something that they were doing. So they sort of share that idea of pilgrimage. Uh, but the, the, the pilgrim, they go to Mecca, which is their holy uh, holy city. And we'll talk about Mecca in a couple of slides later on. Uh, but we've mentioned uh, an iconic. So the, one of the big, big, big differences is an iconic. So no imagery. So but the Muslims, they, they fear that any depiction of any human form was idolatry and idolatry, according to the Quran, is a sin. So that was uh, that was a, a something that they stayed away any sort of human form or depiction. So what did they do? They started playing with different ideas, um, different patterns, and different. Uh, another thing was calligraphy, this handwritten um, style of actual words and signatures. So you start seeing that here. You start seeing the stars sort of like to see squares, triangles, and the way they, and they also you see calligraphy all around it. And what's very interesting is that, um, what's very interesting is that this is done by repetition, by getting different geometric play, uh, shapes that are very organic and they start just repeating it over and over again. So I want you to imagine in a sense of, you know, getting this square and, and creating, you know, this, this this pattern. And it would have been a bit more, you know, uh, as mentioned, a more uh, organic, but it's just pretend. And then just getting this whole thing as a shape and then copying and then redoing it again. Imagine, you know, I don't have the ability to just copy and paste it here, but imagine just doing that and then just getting all of this and then copying it again. And and, and that creates this uh, very, very interesting uh, pattern. And so every mosque has its own sort of pattern. They all follow the same idea, but to a certain extent, they are very unique. And so you'll see this, uh, uh, all these mosques covered with ornamentation through these different patterns and calligraphy. And I'll talk about calligraphy a bit more later on. Um, but this is something that has nothing to do with Islamic architecture in a sense, because this is M.C. Escher, who uh, was way, way, way after 
all of this mosque period, but he eventually travels to Spain to Alhambra uh, and he sees one of this mosque and, and, and he sees these patterns and through these patterns he becomes inspired and and he gets uh and so you start seeing here this sort of idea of repetition this sort of idea of pattern this sort of idea of of the positive and the negative and here you see this fish and and sort of the negative space is creating this duck so these birds uh taking flight in the same way you see it on on, on this one you know the the negative space is black and white and the negative space is creating uh, ducks and birds sort of flying in the opposite direction. So it's very, very, very interesting. The reason why I brought this up, one, is to um, to help you understand this idea of what the, the, the patterns look like and 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 how, you know, they the influence many, many people later on. But one of the also reasons was, uh, I remember I had this book, and maybe you did too, I don't know, I think it was a Part of the curriculum, but I remember being in English class as a 10 year old or something and having a book that I forget what it's called, probably English, I don't know what it was called, but it had this as its cover. And I remember being fascinated by, by this specific bird like cover. And I was and I was really, really fascinated. I remember putting a piece of paper on top of it and and redrawing it myself. And I remember my mom actually looking at it and saying, did you draw that yourself? And I was, for a second, I did lie, and I said I did, and then later on, I was like, no, I'm, I'm kidding, I didn't draw it. I was just like, oh, that was pretty good. But uh, what I found interesting is that at the time, I had no idea of Islamic architecture, of the idea of an, uh, an iconic or patterns and all these things, but, uh, but it's interesting how later on, you know, I'm able to understand a bit more. So the idea of patterns and the idea of, uh, uh, how the Islamic world is doing this uh, ornamentation becomes very, very important. And one of the last things of ornamentation before we actually start is the idea of calligraphy. So calligraphy, they write in Arabic. And, and so this is a signature of uh, Suleiman the Great. So one of the greatest uh, emperors uh, that lived at the time. And, and this signature actually consists of, of the name of the Sultan and the father, the, the title and the phrase eternally victorious. So this is supposed to be a GIF and has different layers. It's not working here apparently, but it shows you all the different layers of people writing. I don't know how it was written, so I'm probably gonna mess it up, so I'm not even gonna try. Um, but imagine this is sitting down, this image is, is sitting in a museum, I think in New York. And, and imagine, you know, hundreds of years after, imagine his signature is being studied by all these people and being considered as art. But if you see it, it really is a work of art. It's really, really an amazing piece of art. So calligraphy is not just a form of writing for them, but it's a form of connecting them to, to um, in a spiritual way, it's also connecting them to power and it's also creating art. It's really creating art as they uh, place this all over their building. So it's something that is uh, important to, to keep looking into. So now let's start looking into some early shrines. The first one that we're gonna look into is the Dome of, uh, Dome of the Rock. And so this was actually believed that in the Dome of the Rock, it was uh, the place where Abraham had come to sacrifice uh, Isaac. And not only that, but it's also believed that it was a place where Solomon had his temple. But not only that, but it was actually the believed that it was the place where Muhammad had ascended in his uh, journey into paradise. So this place becomes very, very, very important for everyone. And so they built this uh, this 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 dome uh, surrounding this rock. So the rock becomes a, so we see that it's a central plan. We've talked about this before. So the central plan means that whatever's in the center becomes very important, but at the same time that everything's just sort of running around. We talked about this sort of like an onion shape kind of of different layers. As you see the ambulatory space here, the different columns, and the central dome. Uh, and hopefully, as I mentioned, try to think of designs of the past. I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. What does this remind you of? What are some designs that we've seen that this reminds you of? 
And hopefully you said of some martyriums, maybe some baptistry, uh, mausoleums, uh, one in specific, uh, hopefully like the San Constanza, which was, you know, this um, uh, martyrium that was um, mausoleum that where she was uh, buried and you see this sort of the same sort of concept. So even though uh, we are already transitioning from the, um, the Christian uh, era, uh, you'll see, you still see some resemblance to uh, uh, designs from the past. So it's something very interesting to start seeing. Uh, we've, we've talked about how uh, they, every uh, part of the five truths, they have to make this trip and they have to make this trip to, to Mecca, specifically to this place, to the, to the, uh, to the Kaaba. So this is uh, a black stone that is believed that was given to Abraham again. Abraham is a very, very important figure. And so what is important to know is um, that I want you to start seeing it over and over again with Islamic architecture is that it's very ambulatory. It's about, it's not very, uh, it's not that this is in a one place, you know, because this, this could have been done that this stone is here and then everyone else is sort of here. So this becomes a very high place. But no, the way that they've done it, the way that they worked around it, is that this becomes in the center. This becomes in the center, and then everyone um, comes to the center, and then everyone else is sort of around it. That didn't work out as, as well as I imagined, but you can imagine that's in the center. Uh, the square is in the center, uh, right here, if I get this one. And so, so what, what does that mean is that everything is about positioning. Everything is about where you're facing. And one of the things is that they have to be facing Mecca. So every time we, we mention, we reference Mecca, remember this image, remember, you know, they're, 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 they're focusing on this place and, and they're, they're referencing this place. So, so the idea of perspective, the idea of where they're facing, so here, since this becomes a center, everyone wants to be facing. So it becomes this sort of, everyone gets a, a good angle, regardless of where you are, you get a good angle. So it's not how, it's very different to what we've seen in the Latin church, which uh, the apse, the altar place becomes this very, very important place. And, but everyone is sort of um, facing it. Uh, from this direction, but uh, but this makes uh, changes everything to uh, this being the central focus. So now let's uh, keep going into what are the mosque. And so uh, one of the things that we saw, or that is very important to know, is is how did the typology of the mosque? Begin? So the typology of the mosque began by. Uh, so this is a prototype of, of uh, reconstruction of the house of the prophet, and it just uh, it it has this open courtyard, and so and this open court, courtyard is so that can, people can actually hear the sermons and participate in group prayers. Again, it becomes about space, about uh, providing a big space. Everything is about providing the biggest space possible to get the most amount of people to pray together. Uh, and so then, so then that that becomes incorporated into the mosque. So you see this idea of a perimeter. So the most important thing is that they get this idea of the perimeter and this idea of a courtyard uh, allowing for the space. And so we'll see how uh, the mosque start um, referencing that. So this is the plan of the great mosque of Damascus. And so uh, this one, I'll just really focus on some of the things uh some of the elements so uh one of the elements that i want you to see you know it is sort of uh, there's sort of this sort of axis going on but most importantly uh they always have to be facing mecca they have to be as they're praying they're facing mecca we we we've talked about that recently but we see here uh, that the wall at the end is called the prayer wall or the quibla. You see that here, and um, and that is is pointing, is showing them where uh, where to pray. And not only that, but the most important thing is this prayer niche, which is usually three niches, is sort of uh, and called the mibrav, which this is 
what's finally pointing to to Mecca in this case, pointing this way. Uh, and and so so as people would enter, they would enter from here, and as they were entered, they, they were uh, entered to this giant gate, this very big gate. That uh, again, it's not so much about procession of dividing spaces, but it really is con about connecting them to um, what they're about to do. They're elevating their, you know, their spirit, connecting them spiritually to uh, to this moment that they're about to pray. And another thing is that you still see in this hypostyle hall, so this this con this uh, series of arches. So I didn't, I don't think I have an image, but inside there's all these arches. I just want you to imagine all these as a series of arches uh, going on. But what's very 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 interesting is that they're not dividing they're, they're dividing space, but they're not creating space. So what does that mean? Uh, previously, we saw that, you know, the narthex is here, and then we have a nave, and then we have an aisle, and then we have an abs, and we have a transept. So there was all these different names for the different parts of the church. But now in a mosque, it's saying they're all, in a sense, equal. And basically, the most important part is the niche, because it's pointing to um, to the to Mecca, and here you have a minbar. So the minbar, it is who's leading the prayers. It is here, so that is the most important part. But at the, at the same time, it's just creating this very open space, this this space that allowing for the maximum amount of people to be able to join in together and pray. And so before they they did enter, they also have this open courtyards, so where also allowed them to have space to gather and pray, uh, but also have this fountain to have this water that allow them for cleansing. We've seen the idea of water uh, and cleansing also in the, the Christian architecture. That's something that's sort of uh, also following through. The last thing that I do want you to notice are what minarets. Minarets are just basically towers. So this is sort of tower-like that people can go up and as they go up, they can shout and say, uh, announce the prayer time or calling the people into prayer. So the idea of prayer is so, so important that it, it, it creates the space. So everything revolves around the space for prayer. The directionality is connected to the prayer, always pointing to Mecca and even the, the outside uh, having this towers to uh, call attention for prayer. So the idea of prayer and space becomes very evident. Uh, so what are the three things that sort of stand out? So these are something that I, I kind of thought about. So you maybe you can have your own things that sort of start standing out for you. But the things that sort of really stand out for me is orientation. So where are they looking? You know, it's now it's not just about placing it uh, uh, vaguely, randomly in any place, it really has to do with where is uh, where is Mecca. So wherever that is, that's where they need to be facing. So Mecca is in this in this case. Uh, so the church is here, is then uh, facing this way, and so on. So the idea of orientation becomes very very important. Also, the idea of purpose and space. So the purpose is more about prayer. It's more about a gathering space, and and so and so the space begins to reflect that. The idea of, of the space inside comes to really reflect that. Uh, I'm going to talk about certain elements of of an architecture that I already mentioned it really quickly, but just so you can see a bit more visually, this idea of a minaret and minaret. Uh, you know, they all do the same and they're all created for the same purpose. The purpose is to call for prayer, to be able to call uh, the people into prayer. Uh, but also it's a way that it's very, very clear. It creates this sort of skylight perspective. So it, it's something that, you know, if you are seeing it from this is big towers, so if, it's something that you could see from a distance. So even if you're really, really far away, you can see where the where the mosque was located. So so it's also creating this shift in the in the in the skyline, so people can also remember and be connected to this 
to, to the mosque. So there's different um, minarets as, as you're seeing here. The one that uh, we'll see a little bit more in this during this lecture is the Ottoman Empire, which is very easy to remember. Just think of it as a pencil. That's this is sort of the way that I imagine it. It's sort of this pencil-like, very, very thin, you know, on the top is the eraser. It's sort of this pencil-like, very thin-like uh, minaret, and it's, it's categorized for the Ottoman Empire. We'll talk about that later on. One of the interesting ones is this is uh, is this minaret that is a spire minaret that, and it kind of looks like a cigarette. We, we talked about the cigarette, which is this layering kind of going on. It kind of looks like a like that. Uh, also, some people called it, you know, the ice cream minaret because it kind of looks like this sort of, you know, ice cream cone, if you would. So, so it's interesting to see how it changed from from uh, region. We talked about prayer and directionality, and prayer becomes very, very, very uh, important for them. So, followers of the religion, you know, they they had to, um, they were focus on on joining together and so you see this amazing picture of all of them you know uh joining in prayer uh and so you can see you know they're all facing the same place so they're facing uh towards where mecca is so everything all the space around it is created not so much uh focus uh focused on creating the maximum amount of space for people to be able to join in uh, so, okay, so now we, we get into the mosque, and again, this is another mosque, another plan. It's a bit uh, different, it's a bit different, um, but uh, it has a lot of the same elements. So one of the, the basic elements that we see again is this idea of this colonnades, all these different arches that you see here, all these different arches that... Um, that uh, that are polychromatic and the polychromatic what it means is just poly just mean multiple many different colors and so it becomes a very 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 uh colorful experience you know imagine standing here and seeing this series of arches this rows of this colonnade of arches uh with this polychromatic um ornamentation this color all around it so all of this space is is just for prayer Again, not really dividing spaces, dividing it not in the sense of creating one space is more important than the other, but just providing space. Uh, here it's interesting that you can see this um, the original uh, position of the mosque, but because of you know people started they needed more space, they kept on growing and growing. And uh, here, the, this was the original prayer wall of the of the Qibla, and now this is the the final uh, mirab. So you see how originally it was it was here, but then it got moved to here. But again, the same position has to be facing towards um, Mecca. So you see the same idea that, that we've seen before, the sort of perimeter like, uh, this sort of perimeter like, but also um uh you see this this courtyard happening again so the idea of courtyard so the courtyard is it's not always the same shape that's something that again you'll be seeing and it's similar to what we've seen in the past where it talked about the egg you know that you know sometimes the courtyard will be at a place sometimes it's sort of really a response to um the environment, what, the ability to build, and what is you know nearby. So it really, really, really but they do have that. And then um, here they have the minaret. Um, they have the prayer hall or the haram. So here you know the prayer where they're praying. So also remember that the haram I did not mention earlier, but it is important. And another thing that is interesting to see from the inside is that the the, the Islamic architecture again they're building the past but they're 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 adding to it they're, they're they're providing their own their own take on it and one of the things that they start doing is what many call the, this horseshoe um horseshoe arch so it's not so much a perfect 
circle or half circle. So um, before, you know, we we had seen this perfect, this um, I don't know how to make them in the center, but something like this. But before, you know, you had seen this sort of perfect semicircle, but now you you seen this elongated, more oval-like, you know, more like a, like a horseshoe, which is why we'll see that again and again. And on, and what happens is that it, you might imagine that that because you know the semicircle might be a bit stronger, but actually. Uh, this becomes even stronger, providing greater support, providing greater load reduction. And as we talked about, when you add another arch next to it, it kind of, they sort of become some sort of bracing, some sort of like corrugated um, cardin that, uh, have, you, have you seen this uh, corrugated cardboard that it's like this, is all these different little things and it's creating a lateral bracing upon each other. So something similar is happening here. And as they pull it longer, they also provide a greater stability. So we will see the ingenuity. So let me see this aerial view. Uh, this aerial view, and here you see uh, what sort of looks like ch train stations, you know, this sort of really long, uh, but it's, it's, it's a good picture to see how, uh, all these different colonnades are being created, all these different arches going on inside and then creating this big, big space for prey. And then we see on this other side, we see the, uh, the dome from inside, we see the dome that is happening inside, and, and we see how it's resembling some of the domes that we've seen, but it's sort of doing its own thing again. It's sort of doing something different. So uh, we start seeing this sort of star-like shape happening in inside. So uh, this 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 dome combining the squares and combining with the new uh, imagery that they were using of the different um, shapes of the different patterns kind of it becomes influence into everything that they start doing. So the patterns that we saw as their um, as their uh, ornamentation really starts to represent itself even in the dome shapes. You start seeing that it looks more of a of the patterns that it's on their walls and their facades. Now you start seeing it in other places, and then we'll see it also in arches later on. So now that, let's go into the Iwan and Mokarn. I won't spend too much uh, time on this one, but this is uh, the Iwan or it's called, uh, pronounced Iwan is a rectangular hall or space. And it's usually vaulted with a uh, wall on three sides with, uh, with one, uh, uh, one of them being entirely open. So this is usually we're um, connected to the courtyard and providing this this passage, which again, we mentioned before that uh, I mentioned it before uh, that it, in one of the plans, but it's just simply, it starts preparing you for this spiritual journey, this spiritual journey of prayer and connecting to, uh, to God, to the Allah. So, and another thing that's also interesting to see is the, um, uh, what's it called? The, um, this this sort of uh, honey shaped bead, which I called the mukarnas. I was blanking out. I was gonna call it karna. I knew it had a Q in a karna, but so the mukarna is 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 uh, again. You start seeing uh, this ornamentation just taken to another extreme. So the same shapes and patterns that they're sort of starting to play around with, this very organic shapes. Now it's sort of also becoming its own thing. It, be, it sort of feels like it becomes alive and it's coming out of the walls. And now instead of just being 2D and, and plastered into, into these walls, now it's starting to come alive in three-dimensionality by uh, through these mukarnas, which is sort of, again, it's this honeycomb sort of time, sort of beehive sort of thing that it, it, it was meant to... Um, in a way, it connects them to the creation of heaven and, and how heaven, uh, how earth was created and, and this movement and this idea of how everything was starting to take place.
place and take uh, was created out of nothing. So it starts connecting them to that. Uh, and then later on, we'll go into what is called the multi uh, dome mosque and so there's several ones that we've seen and something that I want you to always think about this is think about Hagia Sophia. So Hagia Sophia hopefully it just makes you think of that one but Hagia Sophia was basically uh, it had a bit influ big influence in uh, many of these multi-dome mosques. So this was done by Sinan. Sinan was probably uh, one of the greatest architects that's it's it's um, engineer that uh, if you uh, you know if you talk to an architect and you mention Sinan, most likely he'll say a lot of good things and be really really inspired because Sinan did one of the greatest architectures um, known. He did a lot of work and so Sinan did this and, and so you start seeing the 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 very clearly articulated geometry of squares. So this, again, what does this remind you of? What does this remind you of? And sort of reminds you of a, of a Greek cross plan. Hopefully that reminds you of the, sort of this Greek cross plan of this also idea of the, the five domes, which this in this case is a bit more, but this sort of the same plan. But again, it, it is an Islamic architecture, it's not in the Byzantine, and we can start seeing several reasons. You see the minarets, you know, Byzantine would not have that. So the minarets is a big, big uh, thing. And again, the, the directionality of the praying towards uh, Mecca, it's a big thing. So here we see inside, and um, again, we start seeing the, the different ways that the uh, the domes really start to take place into um, into the inside of these buildings. Uh, another of this uh, multi dome was um, probably one of the most important ones was the mosque of the Suleiman, Suleiman the Great, the Magnificent. And we saw his signature previously. We saw how how important his signature was and how it becomes a big thing, but now we see um, a, a mosque that, you know, is done for him. And so Suleiman, um, he really wanted to have some sort of legacy, to leave some sort of legacy behind, to, to really, uh, so this is, uh, people really say this is where the Ottoman Empire really reached its peak. So the Ottoman Empire, uh, it's, it's at its heyday when this um, mosque is being built. And what, what is, uh, is, again, we see this sort of reference to Hagia Sophia. And so uh, most likely they've seen Hagia Sophia. They obviously have seen Hagia Sophia. So, that, so um, they're trying to combine it to uh, make reference to that. But not only are they trying to make reference to that, but they're, what he's really trying to say, what uh, Suleiman is really trying to say is, I am. he's saying I'm better than Justinian. My architecture is has defeated um, the predecessor. So he wanted to build um, way bigger and better. And so what's interesting here also is that they had Hagia Sophia, and Hagia Sophia has really, really, really great architecture, but they had that as a reference. And even though it was a great architecture, it wasn't perfect. There's always room for improvement. So the, this, uh, this dome, this, um, this mosque, what it really changes drastically is the amount of light that can really come in. We saw in Hagia Sophia in the dome, there was uh, little windows around it making the dome almost seem like it was floating but the, this this uh this, the Suleiman's mosque is it takes that even further and, and provides light coming from all different places so now light is not just uh from one place it's just flowing from uh, all, of, all, all around now uh, something that we do need to notice that inside the colors and all of this might not have been the original uh, since there's been fires and earthquakes and things have been changed. Um, but it is, uh, it is um, still the exterior is really part of the, the thing. Uh, here we see uh, one of the minarets and you see this beautiful picture of this um, as the sunset is kind of hitting it. And, and, and you see this courtyard, this, you know, the, the 
uh, this fountain for water. And, and so you start seeing how uh, they're referencing uh, Byzantine architecture, but at the same time, they're, they're doing their own thing. They're, they're, they're still staying true to uh, the, the Basilica. Uh, something that I don't know about, yeah, I think I'll mention in the Alhambra, but now let's go into tombs. And something that, uh, I won't take too long in tombs, but something that I do want you to see here is uh, this idea of a, of a, of a plan. This is a square plan that is divided into into four. And, and so here you see, you know, divided into four. And so uh, Islamic architecture really was very connected to garden. They really wanted to create, uh, they really uh, wanted to create great gardens. And one of the things that they connected gardens to was with the time of uh, Eden, the time of uh, when, when it was the paradise. And in the and, and, and the the scripture says that there is this four rivers flowing. So so through having this uh, four rivers idea, they start creating this this plan, this square plan. And usually here I'm, I'm sort of covering it. Uh, let me remove it. But here you start seeing this water flowing from four different areas. So basically they're creating their own paradise one more time. So that's something that I want you to, when you think about gardens, start seeing this. And what is interesting about this tomb itself, this is a human's tomb complex garden, is that even the plan of the church is sort of divided into four. So taking this idea of paradise even further. Uh, there's, an, uh, there's another tomb that's a bit, um, this is uh, down by, uh, and to memory of, of the wife that just uh, passed away. And, and it's, again, um, one of these iconic images that has really um, seen all over. And uh, one of the uh, questions is always is my bucket list. This is one of my that is in my bucket, bucket list. This is one of the most famous uh, tomb, dome tombs. Again, using the idea of tombs, domes. And, um, and so uh, this was more bilateral symmetry. So here you you do get the idea of bi, you know symmetry happening, which wasn't too uh, common. It was common, but it, it wasn't. Uh, but then you get this white marble and just um, reflecting on this water, which makes it really, 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 really beautiful moment. And, and you still see a lot of the similarities. You still see the minarets. Um, you still see the minarets uh, happening. You see the minarets um, here. Uh, but uh, you see the tomb. Um, so you see it's a very symmetry, but again, you see this garden before you enter and what do you notice? You see the paradise again. You see this idea of the water, uh, four rivers crossing by, creating this grid, this plan, uh, as you keep going. There's a legend that says that there was another Taj Mahal, uh, uh, Done and it was the since this is white, there was a black marble, and people looked for it for years. And but uh, many people just say that it was the reflection of the water, uh, the, the actual reflection that uh, made people think that there was another one, but there was that was never uh, true. Uh, dwellings, this is the last thing we'll, we'll look into, and so something that's interesting to see is that. Um, that despite, you know, they, they bring a lot of the ornaments or a lot of the uh, representations that you see in a, in, in a mosque, they, they're able to bring it into uh, dwellings. And in this case, is a palace. It's not a very common, typical uh, dwelling itself. It is a palace, so it's a bit, uh, uh, a bit more uh, elegant, elevated, but still, it, they're able to see it. So this is in Granada space in the Andalusia area. And um, you start seeing these, uh, again, this sort of idea of the garden. I think they do have another image. Um, yeah, so you start seeing this idea of the garden again, uh, happening again with the square. And in the center, you have this water 
uh, this fountain of the lions, and again, connecting them everything to the same uh, idea. I, I, I was kind of clicking because I thought there was another image, but I guess I did not add it. Um, hopefully, I, uh, right now I'll go into the, the reviews and I do have an image there. But something that I wanted to show you is that there's this amazing picture. I don't know how come I forgot to add it, but it's sort of here. And you see these, these sort of, uh, this sort of um, um, horseshoe arches that are happening. And, but not only that, but inside, they, they start becoming even more and more pointed. They start becoming even more and more pointed than before. So it's another very clear way that you can know that it's Islamic architecture. But what's also uh, very easy to understand is that inside these these arches, you start getting the makarnas again. You start they sort of the arches start becoming deconstruct deconstructed in in a in a way again that the imagery the pattern like that is in the arch itself in the wall this 2d this, this very plastic uh, idea is just becoming alive and becoming 3d and taking shape so now um i didn't reference that too much but i do want you to see and maybe go back uh in other images and, and other um architecture i'm just trying to go back to see if i did make that, bring an image of that but i don't uh, really have referenced that too much. Uh, but it really starts just really shaping uh, sort of like here. But like like here you see in this arches, it starts really changing the shape of the arches. It starts really cha changing. Like here you see this, um, this sort of, again, this sort of niche uh, arch-like. It starts really changing. And, and here you see it again. Here you see it again. And it's just really based upon uh, the same idea of this pattern likes that just become alive and are just really uh, uh, incorporating everything. So I'll end with, with uh, uh, Hagia Sophia. And the reason why I wanted to end with this because I, we sort of ended the previous lecture on Hagia Sophia. So uh, Hagia Sophia, as we've talked about, it was completed, but eventually it does get reclaimed and eventually, but eventually it does uh, conquered and converted into a mosque uh, in Constantinople. And so, um, and now it's it's becomes a museum later on. So the reason why I wanted to end with this is again, since we ended on, on it previously, but it's, I wanted to see how, um, how a, a Christian church, now a, uh, um, Islam church, how how they had to change some things in order to make it more Islam. So uh, so I want you to start thinking of, of what do you think they changed. So one of the things is uh, um, remember we talked about the Christian was more uh, had more iconography, some more imagery, and rather and the uh, Islam had no no. Um, they didn't want to have any imagery. So they changed it for this calligraphy. They changed it for more uh, uh, patterns, more colors. But one of the big things is they started adding this Arabic writings, calligraphy uh, around it. Here was one of the mistakes that, that was there originally, uh, but eventually had to be, you know, so they had to, they, they took away all of that. Uh, another thing that, uh, that we can notice is that this is uh, where it's facing towards Mecca, but uh, but it's sort of not on this axis. It's not central. It sort of had to change it. Here you can see that it's not centered. So they placed this in a way that was off axis. Why? Because it's it's facing and needed to be facing Mecca. So even though the, you know, uh, it should have in a way not should have, but it, uh, it seems that it should be following this pattern, but because it's following Mecca, uh, they, they twisted on this axis. And not only that, but they started building other things as, as we mentioned. So we had, they added the Midrauf 
and they also added the minbar, which is the place where they would do the, the prayers and the, you know, the, the sort of, um, they would share the message. And they also added the Sultan's Lodge. And I don't think I have another image of that. No, I don't have that. But the Sultan's Lodge, it was this place that the Sultan, uh, the great Sultan, he still wanted to come to the mosque and pray, but it was very difficult for him, you know, to, to uh, just, you know, be there with everyone else. So they created this sort of secret hallway for him, this private hallway, because also in those times, the Sultan was this sort of, um not it was this sort of not deity but it was this elevated status that it was believed that god placed him so he was a very uh, important figure for them spiritually and also politically so so there was this sort of division between uh who he could talk to who the sultan really talked to and who he associated himself with so that's one of the reasons why he was uh, created this sort of path. And so this was added later in, in Alice Sophia, which when we were studying before, we didn't mention this because it was, it was not part of that. Uh, but now you start seeing how any church can be um, reshaped in a sense to become more, uh, to become under, to become um, under the Muslim um, architecture. Another one, uh, that was very, very clear is that they added these uh, minarets, which remember we talked about this is pencil like, which was the Ottoman, and it was very different to the one we see in other places, such in uh, Cairo. Um, so here you start seeing, you know, the minarets, and we talked, we call, we, we said that it, there, there's sort of this towers that call the people into prayers. So before there was actually people going up. Nowadays they use this sort of speaker. So it's uh, pretty um, fun to see that, you know, how times have changed and made. This, this still has the same purpose, but now it's been more advanced in a way. And the reason, you know, it, it made sense the higher you go, the more voice volume you get, the more range you get. So that's one of the main reasons that they also did that. Um, so this has the, the uh, Sophia originally would have not had minarets. You know, we talked about that, uh, but they added the minarets. And uh, one of the minarets was added by uh, Sinan. So Sinan, again, we talked about, he was one of the, the great architects of this time. And Sinan had the, you know, was also gave his, um, um, signature by adding one of the the the, the uh, one of these towers. So uh, so not only that, the, and so um, but adding these minarets, you know, it, it usually was for providing the different uh, all the different areas uh, uh, that they can reach. Um, but here, you later on you see this another one that has six. And that was, a, at the time, it was a bit controversial. Um, just called the Blue, uh, Blue Dome um, uh, Mosque, uh, that's the nickname. It was a bit controversial because that's the, the same number that the, the one in Mecca had. So, it was, so, you know, having more minarets gave you higher status, but uh, in a way it was a bit controversial to have the same amount. In Mecca. So you see how, you know, they're doing new, completely new architecture, but they're doing extremely close to old architecture. So you see the this sort of influence happening, but also in a way you see influence from the Muslim now uh, reincorporating and in, into uh, reshaping the architecture. So that's sort of uh, it with the Muslim architecture. I want to go really quickly into the, um, I'm going to go really quickly into a little review of some of the things that might be on the quiz. So some of the things that might be uh, going on the quiz, let me share my screen really quickly. And it will start.
Thanks for credit. Um, there's already several extra credit opportunities in this next quiz, so I think you should be fine with that. But there's no extra credit regarding this particular lecture. Uh, but let's go. So I made a bit of a review regarding this is a fair quiz too. Um, I think you know. Okay, I think they're a bit confused, but we'll see. So, word and this is about this one. Word and phrases from the Quran are often written in calligraphy and Islamic art and architecture. We talked about art and calligraphy. So, is, is this true or false? So, I will give you the answer, but a question similar to this might be on the quiz. So, uh, uh, what is the orientation of the mosque and the prayer? We talked about this over and over again. Orientation is so important. So again, I'm not giving the answer, but you should know that one, hopefully. Uh, what type of building was the Taj Mahal? It's pretty simple. Uh, again, not giving you the answer. I will give you a couple, but some are pretty e easy that I'm, I don't really think that I should <laughs> give you because you should know it. Um, who was the architect of the Samuel Mosque at Dan Turkey? So this one I do give you because I did mention Sinan, but I don't know if you'll remember exactly that he did this one. Maybe you'll guess Sinan because that was the only one we've mentioned, but Sinan, he uh, worked on this uh, architecture. Who, I know this is from the other one. Um, the building type most closely associated with Islam in a primary place of worship. So Christianity, we have the Basilica. What is the name that we were using for the uh, Islam, which is the mosque? Baptistry, that is for the other one. So again, I don't, think uh, that for the quiz is going to be the exact same picture but it's going to be an image very very similar um probably very similar or the same picture that's going to be similar but what is this uh, i mentioned it uh, very quickly and i'll give you this one it was an eve Yvonne, Yvonne. Uh, google how to say that um but it's not going to be the same image so it's just, it's just sort of uh oh here it is again uh, now I'm asking you, what is it? So I'm not giving you that, but just try to look up on the book. What is an Ivan? So have that memorized. That's sort of from last time. The, of the, the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem has what kind of shape? Was it circular? Was it octagonal? Was it um, square? What was it? So what kind of shape was it? What did Mughal Shah in India? Uh, who did it, who, the Taj Mahal? Who was it built for? I, uh, didn't men I mentioned it right now. So, uh, what type of mosque was the Great Mosque in the core of the line? It was a hypostyle mosque, and I'm giving you this one because I did mention it, but I sort of mentioned it just sort of, you know, jumping over. So, you might have not caught that one. So, hypostyle. Uh, what is the an Byzantine? Um, the Sishal Mosque in Istanbul was inspired and has similar features as which of the fallen uh, Byzantine churches. Uh, I think I give you the answer for this one. I'm not sure, but remember uh, uh, when it comes to dome churches, uh, this is a dome church. Well, you know, which one was the one that probably inspired them the most that they had nearby? Sophia. Uh, kind of cool. Type of building. What type of building was the Alhambra? Uh, I mentioned it um, a little bit based on. So, usually in the mosque, what was going on there? <laughs> I just gave you a clue. So, H2O. I didn't give you the answer, but hopefully that helps you. So, what, what is this building? I was uh, talked about there might be a a black version of it. Um, won't give you the name, but hopefully that one's pretty easy. What is Haram in Islam architecture? I'll give you the, um, this one because, again, I didn't mention it, but sort of just passing by. So it was the prayer hall. We saw the different the arc of the different arches. Uh, what is this one? So kind of look at this picture. It won't be the same picture, but it would be sort of similar. So uh, look into that. What is the most sacred site in Islam? So it's all pointing to that, praying to that. Do you have to do pilgrimage there? Where is that? So this was the image that I was actually talking about earlier that I said that I, I, 
I want to show you a bit of, um, no, it's actually not it, but it's a little bit. You see how these arches, um, they start deconstructing in a sense, creating sort of macarnas. And so that's what I started, I wanted to talk to you about different arches really shaping and creating new new shapes that are more organic. Um, and here it's, again, it's creating the, the idea of the garden. It's um, connecting the water. And so this is a good image, I like this image because this is how they were bringing, they, they brought this sort of, uh, the flow of the water at this angle that would just bring water down and that happened in this cross plant that we've seen in the garden. So uh, this is where the, pot, the patio of the lions in Alhambra and Granada, Spain. This is, what is the architectural style of the Taj Mahal? So what is it? Look into that. Ada Sofia has many paintings of biblical scenes and his interiors are true or false? So the answer is false in the sense because of um, of what it's now. Uh, if you know the question would have been before originally, maybe that would have changed. Uh, this is not okay. This is um, so. What is the minaret? What is it? Um, yeah. So I think that's it. Uh, so this is uh, overall. This is the, the both the, all the questions. They're a combination of uh, the the two things that are going to be on the, on the next quiz opening um, pretty soon. So okay, thank you so much for for listening, and hopefully it was enjoyable. Hopefully, you know uh, you still got something from this, and start, keep studying, keep finishing the assignments, and get ready for the quiz. Thank you, and have a a good day.